Hi there, hey there, I'm Aaron, and this is Camp Peculiar, a channel dedicated to comic and visual storytelling using AI art. Hey, you want to know what? Posing characters for comics is hard with AI, and especially Midjourney, because Midjourney doesn't take an init image, but even with a starter image or an initialization image like in Stable Diffusion, it's really tough to get the pose you want and have it look like the character you need. Here's my current process. We're going to look at three ways that I pose AI characters for comics and comic strips. Before we get started, let's take a look at what makes a good base AI character from which you can derive poses from. Simple is the key here. The style words vector illustration tend to work well. Getting the arms away from the body is important. And so using words in your prompt like da Vinci pose or arms outstretched or arms held out or arms stretched to the sky, anything that you can do in your prompt to get those arms away from the body would be important. You can also tack on things like no background, solid color, because we're going to need to isolate all of these characters. Okay, let's pose some characters. Option 1A, you can try to use Midjourney's Remix feature on your base pose to try to get that pose closer to the version of the pose that you want. This barely works. Remix really, really, really likes to keep that initial pose the way it is and the framing of the particular image as well. Option 1B, you can rewrite your prompt from scratch and use both the dash dash seed and the dash dash same seed parameters with the seed number from your base character and then put in words that that describe your pose, like running, kicking, punching, whatever it is, and try adding higher word weights to those particular words. You're trying to get mid-journey to keep your style information from your base character while developing a new set of poses for it. To be honest, this works only slightly better than the remix option. You will likely get different poses, but you're going to suffer from style drift and finger drift and all sorts of other things that start to look off model. It can work well, and it can work especially well for smaller panels in your comic where detail isn't important. Option two is the most labor intensive and the one where the results range from acceptable to, eh, I guess that'll work. Again, this process works good on smaller panels where you just need to hint at the character in a particular pose. But if you're good at this and you have the time, then it can work well on featured panels too. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to go to Google Images, search for the pose that you want, and add the word silhouette to that search phrase. Bring the silhouette of the pose and the image with that pose that you want into Photoshop or Affinity Photo or Procreate. Then bring in your AI character art, whatever you have, onto its own layers in Photoshop. Make sure that the silhouette is on its own layer and it's subject selected, meaning it is isolated and doesn't have any other background imagery around it. So you have your silhouetted pose on its own layer and isolated. Next, what you want to do is go to your AI character art layers and cut out only the most dominant textures and colors, usually things from the midsection or thighs, things like that. Cut out large chunks of those things and start pasting them as clipping masks above the silhouetted pose. You do this until the character is roughed out with the dominant textures and colors. If you do it right, this should look like you took an action figure out of its box, played with it a bunch, then smushed it into a bunch of wrapping paper and tried to give it away as a gift. That's okay. That's good. Since we're only using this silhouette as a base for our clipping masks above it, feel free to draw in extra information on the silhouette or take parts of other silhouettes and blend them together or merge, warp, skew them together until this silhouette has the proportions and the look that you want for your character. The next thing you'll want to do is one by one, cut out all the special parts of the model. Those are things like the feet, the face, the waist, the hands, backpacks, things like that. Put each of those items on their own layer above the silhouette and also above your smushed up crazy wrapping paper image. Turn those special parts into a clipping mask and then move them into position, rotate them, skew them, perspective warp them until they fit in there as good as they can. The results can look awful to pretty darn good depending on how dramatically different the two poses were to start with. All right, number three and my preferred method, use Puppet Warp in Photoshop or the Deform effect in Affinity Photo. The same rules apply here. You want to get as simple a character as you can in as much of a Da Vinci-like pose as you can. Arms stretched out to the side, legs slightly separated. You can try to get Midjourney to give you a front-facing profile version, which it excels at, and a side profile version of the same character using the same prompt or using separate prompts. Either way, it's going to be tough. 
And also using no background, solid background, or trying to get this base pose on a very simple background is important for this process. So bring that base image into Photoshop or your editing program, and then isolate it onto its own layer using select subject or whatever method of masking and cutting that you want to use. There's two different ways you can go from here, a quicker way and a longer way. Let's deal with the quick way first. With your base pose on its own layer isolated, you're just going to use the puppet warp tool and place puppet pins where you want to move that character's appendages around. This usually involves at the base of the feet, the ankles, the knees, the waist, uh, the mid torso, the neck, the top of the head, and same things for the arms. You can then click on those puppet pins that you placed and move the character's appendages around, or more like warp those character's appendages around. If your character is deforming or warping in places that you don't want to, simply place more puppet pins in that area and then just don't touch those pins. All right, option 3B, the one I use most often, is to separate all of the character's appendages and limbs before you apply the puppet warp to them. So that means you're going to make selections of the feet, the shins, the thighs, the lower torso, upper torso, or just the torso altogether, the head and neck, upper arm, lower arm, and hands. Once you get those all separated and on their own layers, you can rename those layers to reflect the body part if you want. Makes things a little easier, but it's totally optional. Next, it's a good idea to find a reference image of the pose you're trying to recreate with your character. And then by having each limb on its own layer, we get three ways in which to move the body part. We can translate it, meaning moving it around. We can rotate it, and it's a good idea when you're rotating it to move the pivot point to where the joint would be and then rotate it around that. And then once it's generally speaking in the right area, you can apply the puppet warp to just that layer and then sculpt and warp things around so it fits into the body. Layer order is important here, making sure that the right things are above or below each other. When you're done with all of that, you've got it close enough, flatten the image and then use content aware fill or the clone stamp tool to fix any major issues. On all of these methods, 1A, 1B, 2, 3A, 3B, whichever one you picked or your own method, it's a good idea, I think, to use the burn and dodge tool when you're all done to sort of add more shadow and highlight information to sort of further sell the idea that these are actual limbs and placements that have some kind of depth and reality to them. There you go. That was three ways to get an average or maybe even above average pose using the same AI comic character. I get that it's not perfect and maybe not even great yet, but it is workable and I hope it doesn't stop you from making a comic strip or the comic book that you want. So try it out and let me know what you think or any other methods you have in the comments below. This process will likely change as the AI gets better and better, and I will pin a comment in the comments thread below to let you know when an updated video is posted about this particular topic. Thanks a lot for watching. If you learned something or like this kind of thing, like and subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time at Camp Peculiar.